Hello, I'm Guy from Team 3491 Fix It, and this is v Foyer video number seven. Okay, so in this video, I'll be showing you how to analyze the beacon on the FTC field in real time. Uh, just a fair warning: I'm we're using OpenCV for analyzing the beacon, and since I don't want this to be a 30-minute or so video, I haven't included the OpenCV installation, like how to install OpenCV. If it really, like if you guys really want us to show you how, then we can just make another video. But for now, I'm leaving this out um, as there are plenty of tutorials online to do this anyway. Okay, so uh, let's just begin. Let's, okay, so right here I have, let's see, analyze. This is where we analyze the beacon. Um, right here I have this sort of section that I cut out of the art mode that you guys wrote um, last in video number six that Alex showed you how. Um, and I'm sure you remember that he just basically put a line that said analyze the beacon here and here we're basically going to show you how I analyze the beacon. So before I actually get into the actual code itself, I will um, show you how exactly we're planning to use this. Okay, so let me just write this out. Essentially what we planning what we want to do is we want to say um, we want to run some process using the uh, image from the camera, and it, we ended up say, uh, having five different options. Either we say that we can't see the beacon, where the beacon is red then blue, the beacon is blue then red, or we say these sort of two conditions, which I'll explain later why they happen, but um, for now just know that if all we're seeing, if, we're, if we think the beacon is completely blue, or we think the beacon is, um, like there's no blue on the beacon, then we have these as options for us to uh, return with. Okay, so just in the middle here, we have get beacon config, and I'll show exactly what um, we what we want to put in here after we're sort of done with that kind of thing. Um, so here is the entire code, but I'm going to move it up, and let's just call it get beacon config one. Okay, public int. So we want to turn an int. Get just let's just call it. And um, for now, I'll just kind of copy this parameter. Like, and again, I'll explain them, explain them later um, when we've gone through the entire code. Okay. So, to begin with, we want to know where the beacon is in the real world, and so in 3D space. So, open, so uh, pose equals beacon, beacon to get raw pose. The reason we're using raw pose is um, we're using, we're going to end up using vFoia, like, default vFoia libraries, which means that we need data um, how vFoia encodes it. We can't use how uh, the data that FTC, um, the way FTC uses it, so we need to call it raw pose. Anyway, uh, to make sure that this isn't null, um, and let's just go ahead and make sure this isn't null, and just in case, because we've had problems with this, oops, get pixels, make sure that's not null. And if it is, we want to return beacon is not visible. Basically, we just don't know what's going on. Okay, now, to begin with, um, I'll be just dropping down here to explain everything, but um, we want to first say, like I know I said we want to have data, we call get raw post because we want to have data how the default view for your libraries use it. However, there's some more processing we need to do. Um, this is basically just another set of data uh, organized differently. Um, you can just copy and paste what I'm doing here, or you can sort of try to understand. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying that I'm taking the data that Vuforia gives me, then I'm sort of flipping it around and then putting, in, putting it into a new matrix. That's basically, and then I'm, let's actually put it in. Okay, so now Vuforia, it's the data is organized so Vuforia can actually use it. And if we continue on, next thing we want to do is we want to make, um, like in the end, we'll be using some sort of color analysis to figure out which side um, of the beacon is blue or red. To simplify that color analysis, um, basically we want to zoom in, on, we want to crop out the beacon in our camera's image. Um, if I have it over here, like basically something about like that. 
we want to do something similar to this. Okay, so, um, well, to begin with, we want to find out the coordinates of the pixels. So we want to say, we want to know where the pixel of the top left corner, the top right, bottom right, bottom left, um, and so on and so forth. We do this by saying, um, let's say we make a new float um, array that's just, so just an array of four corners with two pixel numbers, with two numbers, so x and y coordinate for each pixel. And then we say corners zero, so let's get the, let's make this the upper left, tool.project, oops, project point, and again, this is coming from Vuforia directly, so um, you guys should have no issue with importing anything. And we'll pose, so see how we're using the data that we um, changed. Now here is where things get, might get a little confusing. Let me just finish it up, okay. Oh, and then we want to say get data to actually get numbers. Okay. So, um, from this point, just to explain what I'm doing here, I don't, tool.projectPoint needs to know um, what exactly 3D, what 3D point I want, if that makes sense. So, it'll assume that I am, I want to know where the center of my, of the image target is in my camera's image. It'll basically say, okay, well then, it's this coordinate by this coordinate. However, I don't want to know that. I want to know where this coordinate is, that coordinate, that coordinate, etc. So what instead I do is I tell it to move, see, just so 127 millimeters to the left and then 276 millimeters to the, uh, up. So just to show it here, 127 millimeters to the left, and so that's to, to the edge of the image, and then 276 uh, millimeters upwards. I'm not exactly sure how high the beacon is, so 276 is basically just a guess. Um, if it turns out to be for some reason problematic for you, for you guys, then uh, then you can uh, play around with the value. But as long as we get some sort of like the square can be at least here or something, and as long as that ha something like that happens, we can analyze the beacon perfectly well. Okay, and um, the rest of the ones. So let's just. Um, let's just check what exactly values we're using. Um, so just just to explain, so I explained that that was the upper left that I just took a look at. Um, now we might want to say upper right. It's the bottom right and bottom left. So just as one more example, say that take this one, the bottom right, um, we move to the right 127 millimeters and then up 92 millimeters. So to the right 127 millimeters and then upwards 92 millimeters, which would take us to be about there. And that should fit quite uh, nice around the beacon. Okay, um, so now we have the corners in the image, but now we need to actually, you know, crop the image out. And this is the first part where we use um, OpenCV. That's just, um, it may, OpenCV makes it simpler, but first we want to go from Vuforia image, so you see how we're using the image object, we want to convert that to a bitmap first. And I'll be, hang on, I'll just need to jump down here and see what I did. So this is basically just saying make it the same size as the image that we, are, that we already have, and then Um, if you guys watched video number five, you'll, you'll, you'll have known about this already, but you'll also have known that I said um, some phones use RGB 888, the Moto G3 phones use RGB 565, um, that's, that's basically it, it's, it shouldn't be too, um, if you're using RGB 565, just type in this, if you're not, uh, you'd have to type in a different config. Anyway, um, so now we can say call... And got copy pixels from buffer, and then you got pixels. So all this is doing, all these two lines is doing, is basically turning the image object that we got here into a bitmap. Okay, so from there, since we want to use this image with OpenCV, we have to, as it's shown right here, um, turn it into an OpenCV mat. A mat base stands for matrix, and basically all it means is that um, just make sure I'm getting this right. 
all it means is that um, it's just a div. This that's just how OpenCV stores the uh, you know the, its images. Um, oops. Okay. Then from there, uh, we need to actually no. I'm right now. I'm again just making a map, uh, an, an image the same size as the bitmap. Once we go utils bitmap to mat bm and crop. Okay. So now we have a mat that we can, uh, like an, an image in OpenCV that we can use and play around with. And we want to crop it. But first, we've got to process the data a bit. Um, basically, and this is sort of paranoia, I suppose, but if you have your phone rotated in any way, and say something like this, this sort of bound, this sort of uh, the coordinates that you get won't really work if we just assume that um, this coordinate's top left, that coordinate's top right. It shouldn't happen, I suppose, but just in case, we're going to call, I'm just going to, this code is so annoying to type out, um, I'm just going to copy and paste this. Basically, all this is doing is it's saying, um, get all the x coordinates of every corner and find the leftmost corner, find the leftmost um, x coordinate. Then do the same thing for y, uh, for the y coordinate, and find the um, topmost co uh, y coordinate, and then basically find the... Um, largest width of the image so this isn't too complex but say like this was sort of weird um largest width would be basically about here but it might also you know this won't necessarily be rectangle essentially that's we just want to make sure that we capture as much as the beacon as possible okay now um again i actually i can just write this out since um we haven't actually checked to make sure that X and width and height and all these numbers are actually within the bounds of the image. So we don't want to say if our image is 500 pixels wide, we don't want to crop an image at um, the 501st pixel and basically uh, crash the app. So to make sure we don't, we're going to go math.max, zero, equals math.max. We're just making sure X and Y are greater than zero. Um, and then for this width again, two. Con I don't really want to write this out for fear of getting something wrong. Um, for all of these sort of complex, like this sort of convoluted line of code, I re recommend just pausing the video and typing it out on your own. Okay, so now we make sure that the bounding box isn't being um, weird, and we can actually crop something. So here we see it sort of beginning the crop. So mat crop. Oh cropped equals new mat and then we want to tell it okay so crop it out of this image right here and then we want to give it new rect x it requires integers and we use floats because that's just how everything worked out that's what view foyer uses okay so now we should have a cropped image and just to show you what exactly oops ah, okay what i mean by that it basically means that we should have something like that. Something similar to that. I mean, it might definitely look different every time you run this, um, you know, this code, but it should be sim somewhat similar to that. Okay, so now once we have that sort of image, um, next step would be, as it says right here. Okay, so um, if you take a look here, like, a normal image, an image that you might see in everyday life, uh, would be stored by the its RGB values. And I don't want to go too much into um, what all of this means, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm t I'm saying um, instead of being stored the usual way images are storing, I'm storing it in a different. Um, I'm basically saying stored in a different way, which makes um, filtering the image by its color much easier which is called HSV. So if I want to basically, since we're, basi uh, we're looking through the image and we're looking for blue or red, we want to use HSV just because it's better for, um, in this particular case, it's going to be better for us filtering out colors. Okay, um, next step, um, we want to say, now we want to actually fil filter out the colors. And that is done by this. And so let me just uh, fully sort of finish this up. Uh, OK, 
Okay, that should be right. Okay, so just um, let me just make sure nothing's happening with this. Okay. Okay, so now we get a mask, and a mask is basically, well, the best way of explaining it is just to show it. Um, yeah, so this is what a mask might look like. Um, from an image, say for maybe from this image or something, um, it basically says that uh, it goes through the entire image, image. If the pixel is blue, then it turns it to white. If the pixel is not blue, then it turns it to black. And um, just as one side note, since there are so many different shades of blue, we actually have to tell it a numbered range, and that's where these are for. And let me just scroll up. Um, basically, I'm saying that the color, all of the how we're storing the um, the image pixels, the pixel colors has to be greater than 108, but less than 178 for the 178 for the first one, greater than zero, but less than 255 for the um, second color, and then greater than 220 but less than 255 um, for the third color. All that means, all I'm saying here is basically um, it has to be within, it has to be of a certain color range and um, yeah, it's basically it has to be a certain type of blue is what really all I'm saying. Um, and if you look up actually you'll see that I'm not looking for red, we're not looking for red at all. We're basically just going to say um, if blue if the blue side of the beacon is on the right, or if it's on the left, from that, from that we're going to figure out um, the configuration of the beacon. Okay, so after that, um, that now we have an image, something, oops, something like this. But now we want to figure out um, where exactly this sort of white section is. And there are sort of many ways you could do this. You could sort of run through each pixel yourself and figure out, um, and then basically just do, do some weighting algorithm to figure out, oh, okay, well, it's on the right, whatever. Um, OpenCV sort of has something for this already. Uh, the way we're doing it is we're, calling, we're using something called moments or image moments. And all you need to know about image moments right now is that each moment, so there's basically, uh, it's a series of numbers that describe, that describe something about the image. So, um, say this number would basically, and I, you don't have to go, know too much about this, but this number basically is its, uh, the image's mass, as it's called. Um, this is its image's mass weighted in the x direction, etc. Um, you don't have to know, uh, you don't have to understand what each number represents, but what's important is you should know what this sort of number is right here. It's called centroid x, as, a, as I've named it. So um, just a quick explanation of what centroid x and how we're actually going to use it to analyze our beacon. So centroid x is uh, sort of the, I guess you could call center of mass, but really it's just the center of all the colored in pixels. So black pixels don't really matter, but white pixels matter quite a bit. Um, so actually I'll just leave that for now. Um, the centroid x for this sort of image would be somewhere about here. It uh, basically it's somewhere. It'll basically have a number saying it's somewhere in this col column, and the centroid y is just basically exactly the same except calculated in the vertical direction. So if I just flip. Actually, if I just bring this image all the way over to here, okay. The centroid y basically says, um, well, the center of all the um, white pixels is about here. Now. Um, I don't know if you can figure this out by now, but what we're going to do is use the centroid x to figure out, okay, well, all the white white pixels are sort of centered around um, here, or they're centered around here if the, uh, if the beacon is configured, uh, configured differently. So what we say is if the um, centroid x column is on the right, then therefore the beacon must be red, then blue. If the centroid x is over here, so I'm just going to quickly... The vertical. So if it's set, up, uh, set over here, then we say, um, oh, okay, well now blue is on the left and red is on the right. Okay, and I understand that might be confusing and you're welcome to ask us any questions if you want to keep um, finding out more about this. Um, okay, so now let's just actually catch up with what, oops, with the, my uh, template moments. Let's call them 
MNC equals image proc dot moments and then we call mask and then we say true because um, it basically it's asking if it's a binary image and yes it is a binary image it's only um, white or black it's not either one it's not any sort of gray or anything like that okay so now using those moments um, actually I realized I did in a way lie to you sorry about that um, while yes you would use the centroid X to figure out sort of if it's on the, if it's on the left if it's on the right because you know this is the X direction I have found that in actual testing that for some reason the image is sort of rotated 90 degrees there are ways to fix that but I have or at least our team has basically just used centroid Y instead so if we calculate the centroid Y it might tell us that oh it's about here or maybe you know if we flip it around it's about here instead and that would tell us so if, um, if centroid Y is over here then the beacon would be on the right, right side and other, um, otherwise the beacon would be on the um, left side and so on okay um, so let's just show that so if we calculate the centroid a, uh, Y sorry even though I'm getting confused um, so again this is just the calculating the centroid Y Fine. and um, after what we've tested it as it's shown somewhere uh, here it is if basically the centroid Y says it's less than half of the image and remember it begins from the top so um, if it's in this region then we want to say it's red the beacon is red then blue which means that actually what we're doing is we're looking at it sort of like this so if the um, centroid Y of all the blue is over here that means the blue is on the right side otherwise the blue is on the left side and so we can just reflect that so basically we say um, if it's less than half the um, oops half the image's height so the image's height is here if y is uh, above or less than this sort of line right here then therefore you know we know how to analyze the beacon okay um, and so then we can size the beacon red and we can return the appropriate number okay so um, if you looked carefully while I was scrolling down you have you might have seen this and um, I can explain what that is <laughs> doesn't mean you'll use it um, we ha I have I programmed it in but as of yet we're not actually using it in our autonomous so you can sort of skip that but there are cases where it might be nice to know and basically all this means the whole reason we have for it is because sometimes your rope your camera your phone's camera might not see the entire beacon so this is you know a very nice view of it but say instead we were kind of looking at it like this the phone was just turned to the right um, too much then we won't see the red which means that we'll end up the cropping will still work we'll end up with some an image that looks like this which again we don't know if this is wrong or not we like as far as the uh, robot concerned this image is perfectly all right then um, from this image we might jump to um, let's just flip it around we might jump to something like this they would then filter out the color and we'd get something like that which is very nice but because of sort of you know how it's all centered how the color is all centered we can't really tell if the beak of the blue is on the left or on the right because we don't we don't really know what's going on with this in this image so at this point you might basically just say okay well then now we can give up um, which in a way you mean you might want to just say that but um, in our autonomous if our robot we don't have anything to adjust our robots position um, and then in any the case we basically just say um, return all blue just if if we see that the um, blue pixels are basically taking up the entire image we just say okay well we think the beacon is completely blue and that's what we're going to respond with alternatively the beacon might be not at all blue or like completely black we don't see the uh, we don't see any blue color again this is sort of the same thing we're just saying that we don't know what's going on the beacon might be all red we might be uh, looking at the beacon incorrectly or we might just the beacon might just be off because you know there's no blue 
it's not saying that this is all red, it's just saying that there isn't any blue. Okay, but that said, this is very optional, okay? Um, but if you do want it, if you do want to include that, what we it, what it means is basically we say, um, um, just real quick, this basically means the mass of the image. It just counts up. Yeah, it just counts up all the, um, it, in this case, it sort of counts, counts up all the pixels in the image and how many are white. So if we say, um, if it's greater than mask dot, mask dot total, mask dot total, so the total um, number of pixels on the mask, so if we zoom out, it's basically just like all these pixels right here, white or black, um, times 0 0.8, which, since obviously the blue won't fill up the entire screen, we're just saying that if the blue color is taking up 80% of the image or more, then we want to say, we want to tell, we want to respond, oops, okay, hang on, that's, the beacon is completely blue. And then also, okay, and then, you know, um, basically, oops, we want to change that, and then alternatively, if we're saying that the blue takes up takes up, hang on, less, sorry, not greater than less than 10% of the image, so say if it's something about like this, that, then we give up and we basically say, okay, well, there isn't actually any blue. Okay, um, that should work. I might want to cross-check it against anything here, make sure I don't miss anything. Um, if I did miss anything and I somehow, I'm just not going to find it right now, um, comment below and we'll try to fix it as soon as possible. Okay, so now just a quick overview of what you guys need to pass into this method. Um, we have the image, basically the image object coming from Vuforia. We have Vuforia, basically the trackable listener for the beacon, um, and then we have the camera calibration. And just real quick, the image is just so we can actually crop the image and analyze its colors. This is just so we know where exactly to crop it. Um, yeah, and then how uh, camera calibration, even I haven't looked into this too much. As far as I can tell, Vuforia is just using this to figure out how to turn a 3D point into a 2D point. Other than that, it shouldn't really affect your performance. Okay, so now we can actually just use this, and um, there's actually one, there might be two more things um, that we that's left to do. If you look up here and we say, um, if you remember from the art mode, I don't have it here, but if you remember from the art mode that you, you can't really just say get image or something, you have to say get frame queue, and then how, at least how we're doing it is we got get take. Okay, but again, we're still, we still don't want, we want an image, we don't want a frame. And that's what you can get from the v your localizer right now. So real quick, we'll just make an, a method that will take a frame and then uh, return an image for you. So we're just mm, we're just going to call it get image from frame um, closable frame, and then int pixel format. Oh, okay, pixel format. Basically, just this just tells us this tells the method um, what type of image you're looking for. Because as was mentioned in video number five, there are many different types of image that Vuforia uses. Uh, uses. Anyway. Long num, Im num images equals um, let's get the amount of images iterate through all of them and if any of them hang on so if the oops what am I doing uh, if the image that we're looking at right now if it's get if its format is equal to what we want what we want basically which again it could be RGB 565 or 888 then we want to return this sort of image. Then just to make sure nothing goes wrong, we return nothing because we couldn't find the image that we want. Okay, now, that should be just about anything, uh, everything, sorry. Um, so localizer.getframeq.take, and then we want to tell it, so and again, uh, our case, we want 565, not 888, because that is what Moto G3 is use. 
um, and then if we scroll down, what exactly do we use here? Then we use the v4 tackle the tackle default, for instance. Um, in this case, I guess in this art mode, we're looking for the wheels image. So we're just going to get past the wheels, and then you can just call it camera calibration. Really, when it comes to cal camera calibration, you don't, you shouldn't have to worry about it too much. Okay, um, so from here, I mean, all this other code is very nice, but you could kind of go like if conf Big equals beacon blue red drive to left side of beacon this is just an example what you can do and if it's not that oops um, drive to right side of beacon okay um, that should be everything and I know it's very long and intense if you have any questions feel free to comment on uh, below and we'll try to answer them as soon as possible thanks for listening